Good morning. If you've ended up here following a YouTube search, it's likely that you're considering a holiday on the Norfolk Broads. If you haven't been before, let me tell you it's great fun. You should do it. Here's five pointers to help you get the most out of your holiday, which are based on our own experience of boating on the Norfolk Broads. I've copied all of my commentary in the text below, so you've got it to refer back to. I've also added some useful links to other videos and to various references. In no particular order then, number one, where's the best place to hire your boat? Like a lot of questions, the answer is, it depends. It depends where you want to start from. In the North Norfolk Broads, the main boat yards are at Roxham, Stalham and Potter Hyam. In the South, Brundle is a popular starting point. If you haven't been before, the advice is to start in the North Norfolk Broads, mainly because the River Bure and the River Ant are hardly affected by the tides, which is one less thing to think about when you're mooring up or going under bridges. You can book your boat direct with the boat yards, like Richardson's, Barnes Brinkcraft, Herbert Woods and others. Or you can book through a booking agent, such as Ho Seasons. School holidays are always quite busy, so if you have the flexibility, you might want to book outside of the holiday periods. May, June and September are good months, not so busy and there's a good chance of decent weather. The boat hire companies all give you instructions before you set off. You'll also be given a skipper's manual, which you'd be well advised to read. You'll soon get the hang of driving the boat. Unlike canals, there are no locks to navigate on the Norfolk Broads, and you can turn your boat around almost everywhere, which makes both navigation and boat handling fairly straightforward. The second point to consider is, what's the best type of boat to hire? Firstly, don't think that bigger is always better. Choose the boat that's the right size for you. If you're a couple, then a small boat will suit you fine, and you'll be able to moor in smaller spaces. No, not that small. If there's four or more of you, you'll need a bigger boat, but you'll also have more hands to help with the mooring, and taking turns being the skipper. If you want to go under the bridges at Roxham and Potter Hyam, you need to choose your boat carefully as the bigger boats won't go under these bridges. When you book your boat, the boatyard can give you advice on this. I strongly suggest that you choose a boat with a bow thruster, which will make mooring a lot easier. You can now also hire hybrid boats, which will reduce the carbon footprint of your holiday. Most boats now have Wi-Fi, but it'll probably be limited. It's worth checking this with the boat yard before you book the boat. I've made a separate video on which boat to choose. There should be a link at the top now. I've also added a link in the text below. There are pros and cons of the different styles of boat, and it's really down to your personal preference. Have a quick look at the vid. It'll give you some ideas. Number three. Considerations when you're out on the water. The most important thing is safety, yours and the people around you. Make sure you follow the guidance that you will have been given. Once you're out on the water, the first thing you need to get used to is cruising on the right hand side of the river. There are also various speed limits which are well signposted and these vary depending on whether you're passing a built up area, whether there are hazards to watch out for or whether you've got a nice straight run of river in front of you. The maximum speed is 6 miles per hour and you need to bear that in mind when you're planning your route. You'll come across sailboats during your holiday and you must give way to them. Look out also for kayakers and sailboarders. And watch out for day boats. They probably haven't been given the same training that you will have been given so they won't necessarily be following the rules of the river. If you have a dog you'll have booked a boat which allows dogs. Be aware though that several of the nature reserves don't allow dogs, so check on that when planning your journey. You shouldn't have any problem getting under the main bridges in the north of the Norfolk Broads, apart from the ones that I've mentioned earlier. Some bridges are on bends though, 
So you need to be careful as you approach one of these. Ludden Bridge is an example of that. If you have a bigger boat, you may need to lower your windscreen or wait for lower tide before you can go under the bridge. It's important that you check this before you set off. As you're travelling along, look out for wildlife. We once saw an otter playing in the river. Plan your journey before setting out by checking navigation maps and tide tables. It's not as complicated as it sounds and there are apps to download, which I'll come back to later. If you're in the North Norfolk Broads, you might consider visiting the south side of the Broads. This will involve cruising down to Great Yarmouth, crossing Braden Water and going under a couple of low bridges. The river here is very tidal, so you have to time your crossing carefully. If you're a first timer on the Broads, I'd advise you not to do this. There's plenty to do and see in the north of the Broads. When you come back again, as you might well do, then you'll be more experienced and confident to make that trip across Braden Water. If you're determined to cross Braden Water, then contact the Great Yarmouth Yacht Station on 01493 842 794 and they'll advise you how and when to cross safely. This must be done at a slack tide. Also, Google Norfolk Broads crossing Braden Water and you'll get some insight there. And that leads us on to number four, mooring the boat. When you arrive at your destination for the day, you'll need to moor the boat. Mooring the boat is a thing that most first timers are concerned about. Once you get used to it, it's all fairly straightforward. Your boatyard crew will demonstrate how to moor the boat and the skipper's manual will explain what to do. You can also help yourself by making your first trip and mooring as simple as possible. If you're starting from Roxham or Potter Hyam, a good place to head for is Acle Bridge, about an hour and a half away from Roxham and an hour and a quarter from Potter Hyam. You should find plenty of space to moor here on both sides of the river, so you won't be trying to squeeze into a small mooring space on your first trip. Similarly, if you're starting from Stalham, think about stopping at Howe Hill. That'll take about an hour and a quarter. There are several mooring spaces here. The moorings on the broads are all well signposted. Most are free for 24 hours. Private moorings though charge a fee for an overnight stay. Most moorings are side on, so you approach the mooring space and tie up front and back, or fore and aft in boating language. Your bow thruster will help you to position the boat. Some moorings are rear on, where you have to reverse the boat into the mooring space. This can be a bit tricky, but you'll usually find other boaters will help you. Most people on the broads are very helpful. Many of the main moorings have water hoses. It's always advisable to top up your water whenever you moor up, if water is available. Some moorings also have electricity points, where you can charge up your boat's batteries. In busy times, popular mooring spaces are quickly filled up. We've generally aimed to cruise in the morning and arrive at our destination before lunchtime. You can usually find a mooring earlier in the day and you can moor up, have lunch and explore the area in the afternoon. If you can't find a mooring, which is unusual, you can use the mud weight, which is at the front of the boat. This acts as an anchor. You can pull up anywhere out of the way, drop your mud weight and settle down for the night. Remember that you must be moored before dusk. Cruising is not allowed after dark. The fifth consideration that I want to highlight could have been the first. Planning before you go. If you're still watching this video, you'll probably be thinking seriously about visiting the Norfolk Broads and I'm sure you'll be watching other videos and searching online for more advice. Here are some tips to think about before you leave home. I mentioned earlier that you can download apps to help you plan. A very useful app is Visit the Broads with lots of information that will help you. Another good app is the Away app. This also has a mass of information and includes an interactive map showing you where you are. You should also have a look at the Broads Authority website. I've added a link to this in the text below. Before
Before you go on your broad holiday, you'll make a list of things that you need to take with you on the boat. This should include food and drink. You might plan to moor up every evening and go to the pub for dinner. But what if you can't find a mooring near a pub or a restaurant? You need to have some food on board, even if you end up taking most of it back home with you. List all the other things that you need. Don't forget sun cream for when it's sunny. And waterproof jackets and things to amuse yourself when it's not so sunny. Make sure that you know what's included in the boat's inventory. Then take things that you need which are missing. These are likely to include towels, washing up stuff, bin bags, toilet rolls and so on. Oh, and don't forget a torch, a first aid kit and binoculars. Look at a map of the Norfolk Broads and do a rough plan of where you want to go. Remember that you can't go very fast in your boat and you don't want to be arriving at your destination too late in the day when all the mooring spaces have been taken. Research the places that you'd like to visit. Is there a pub or restaurant within walking distance of the mooring? Will it be dog friendly? Finally, when you're planning where to visit on your Norfolk Broads holiday, think about where you need to be on your last night. You'll probably need to hand back the boat to the boatyard by nine o'clock on your last morning. It's best then to moor up somewhere close to the boatyard on your last night. You don't want to leave yourself a two hour journey on your last morning and then find there's a hold up and you're running late. You don't need that stress. So there's some useful pointers for you to think about based on our own experience. Don't hesitate to book a boating holiday on the Norfolk Broads. It's great fun and you won't regret it. As I said at the beginning, check the text below to see my commentary and several useful links. Thanks for watching and have a great holiday.